I don't associate fairies with the city. All the traffic and noise and pollution. It just doesn't seem like the type of place that fairies would want to be. When I was a kid, I used to have this superstition. I used to think that those white dandelion seeds or thistle downs you see, sometimes floating on the wind, were actually fairies. And that if they got caught on a brick wall or in a fence or on the road or something, you had to carefully release them by stretching your hand up high in the air, as high as you could, so the fairies would get scooped up on the breeze and be able to float free. I used to do this all the time in the summer. I believe that whenever I released a trapped fairy, it would grant me a wish, so I was always on the lookout for them. Years later, as an adult, I had an experience related to those floating seeds. It was late summer, and it had been unusually windy. And maybe because of this, I don't know, there were hundreds, maybe thousands of those seeds, dandelion or thistledown, I'm not sure which, floating on the air. There were so many, it looked like it was snowing. I thought it looked magical. I went for a walk, avoiding the main busy streets and heading for a local park. I lived close to a very pretty old park with lots of trees. I followed one of the many paths through the park. There were quite a few people around walking or sitting under the trees. It's the city, you can't escape people. But I wasn't paying much attention to them. I was focused on all the falling seeds. It really was magical. Soon after, I noticed someone walking on the path ahead of me. This person was a girl, I think maybe a teenager, or at the most in her early 20s. She was short, petite, and dressed in what at the time I thought was a costume. It was an off-white, long, flowy, ballerina-style dress. The best way I can describe it, it looked like those long ballerina dresses that the snowflakes wear in the Nutcracker Ballet. She had long dark hair, loose, but I was walking behind her so I couldn't see her face. She was also quite far ahead of me too, let's say 15 or 20 yards. I assume she must have been part of some kind of play or something, which was not an unusual occurrence in this park. So I decided to follow her, thinking she would lead me to a performance that she was involved in. She was moving quickly. She seemed to be almost skipping along. I kept pace with her, but I didn't want to run after her and seem like a weirdo. But the longer I followed her, the more strange and just magical this girl seemed. The way she moved, the way the light caught on her dress and sparkled like light reflecting off a pond. It's hard for me to explain. I didn't put too much thought into it at the time, but thinking back, I almost feel like as I followed her, I was in some kind of a trance. All I knew was that I wanted, no, I had to follow this girl wherever she went. It didn't matter. Eventually, she ducked off the main path between the trees. The trees in this park were very spread out. It wasn't like a forest. You could easily see between them. So I followed her off the main path, but there came a moment where I glanced away from her for a second and suddenly realized that there weren't any people around. This was odd because, like I said, it was the city. There's always people around. And then when I looked back to follow the girl again, she was gone. It was like she had vanished. I couldn't figure out where she could have possibly gone to. I had a very good view of the area. I walked quickly in the direction I thought she had gone and then back onto the main path and circled the whole of the park again, keeping my eyes open for the girl. But I didn't see her anywhere. Now, it is a big park, but not that big. 
If she had been in that park, I should have been able to spot her, especially in that outfit. I also didn't see any kind of play or performance or anyone else dressed in costume. The other thing is, when I circled the park, the area I had originally thought was empty now had people on it, hanging out here and there, lounging on the grass, and it looked like they'd been there for a while. Even though I could have sworn the whole area had been empty only minutes earlier. I don't know who or what that girl was. I guess it's possible she was just an ordinary girl on her way to a ballet recital or something like that. But I like to think, in my imagination, that she was a fairy. That she was one of those floating seed things that had taken human size temporarily to skip through the park. And when I saw her, when I followed her, I slipped for a moment into her reality. One where thistle downs are girls in dresses, where magic is real, where anything is possible. I think even in a big city, if the moment is right, a portal can open up to something magical. You just have to be ready to seize the moment when it comes. I live in a high-rise apartment building in Illinois. It was late afternoon, early evening, and I was gazing absently out the window at the way the setting sun was lighting up the windows of the building across from me in these fiery orange colors. That's when I noticed a floating array of tiny one to two inch shapes that moved in a slightly erratic but continuous line of flight past the buildings. There was no discernible breeze, by the way. The beings were somewhat transparent, but still visible as I could see the air morphing and shifting as they moved. It was like a slightly transparent cloud of, well, I don't know what. I'm certain they were bugs. They looked like small, shifting, humanoid forms, though they were morphing and changing as they moved like fluid creatures made of air and water. There was something joyous about them, like these creatures were things of the air and were out having a grand old time. It made me think of dolphins or whales leaping out of the water. I had a sense that these beings were having fun, leaping into our reality from theirs, and I was enchanted. This charming display continued for several minutes until the last shape disappeared around the corner of a building and out of sight. This happened when I lived in New York City. I was walking my dog late at night around the parking lot of my building. We did a once around the lot as always, but as we were about to start the second lap, a large figure stepped out of the shadows. He looked like a homeless person. I was startled. I hadn't noticed him at all and suddenly he was just there right in front of me. It was like he had materialized out of nowhere. He was a man, definitely dressed like a homeless person. He had dark skin, but I couldn't make out any of his features. He had a hood or something hanging low over his face. Then he spoke to me in a deep, whispery voice. He said some things to me, some very personal things that I won't repeat. Things there's no way he could have known about me. The things he said, they weren't unkind, more advice-like. As he spoke, it was like all the sounds of the city faded away. I could hear only him, 
and maybe a few distant street noises. I said nothing. There was no time to. It all happened so fast. And then he laughed, turned, and vanished, leaving a point of light blue light about the size of a light bulb that then winked out, leaving me standing there stunned. It was just so odd. But I wasn't frightened, I wasn't shaking, and I didn't run immediately back to the building as I would have done if I had been mugged or threatened. In fact, the experience wasn't threatening at all. The man had seemed good-natured to me, and I never felt like I was in danger. It was a bizarre experience that left an impact on me. And point of fact, I did take some of his advice. Years later, after I'd left the city, I mentioned my experience to two ex-New Yorkers who said that they had also heard about strange encounters with beings that looked like homeless people who dispensed advice and encouragement and then vanished. I don't know what fairies are, but I have a feeling that the being I encountered was one of them. I live in the city, in Florida. This happened after a series of bad storms had torn through. I remember it was a Sunday morning after the rain had finally stopped. I was out in my backyard surveying the rain damage. It was not a pretty sight. My plants were looking terrible, like they'd been flattened within an inch of their lives. I squatted down to examine some of the stems to see if they were broken or only bent. When a tiny coach moved out from under my once magnificent but now drooping firebush hedge. This coach was old-fashioned, like an old-style hearse, and being pulled by a pair of bridled dragonflies. A larger red dragonfly was at the rear, like a footman providing stability to the apparatus. A small figure was sitting in the driver's seat, wearing a top hat and a black-tailed suit. He spoke to me. His speech was very high and fast and completely unintelligible. I was dumbstruck. I thought I was hallucinating. I closed my eyes and opened them again. But this fairy man was still there, and he seemed to be shouting at me. I said, I don't understand you. And immediately this fairy cracked a a whip above the dragonflies and (laughs) they took off. I very quickly lost sight of them the way you lose sight of a flying bug out in the open. And I was left reeling. Did I just see what I thought I saw? Was I going crazy? Did I have... A fairy living in my backyard whose house was ruined by the rain? I still don't have the answers to these questions, but I can tell you I've never ever seen anything like that either before or since. I guess I could have had a momentary break with reality, or this world is far, far stranger than we think. It was the early 2000s in North Carolina. I was downtown. It was very early in the morning before most things had opened up. I was sitting in my car with a coffee waiting for my art school to open up. There was a thunderstorm brewing and a heavy gusty wind blew through the parking lot. Bits of paper and other trash were being blown by the wind past my car. That's when I noticed that one bit of what I had initially thought was trash looked different. There was this small whirlwind about a foot high 
and in the middle of the whirlwind was a figure twirling inside it at a different rate than the whirlwind itself. It was small, but it looked human-like. It was twirling. It seemed to be dancing with joy as it was propelled by the wind. It scooted past my car and then zipped up the street and out of sight. I sat there and it occurred to me right away that I had just seen some kind of wind elemental, a fairy. And somehow I knew that this fairy was attached to the windstorm. It's the only thing to make sense to me and I don't think it could have been anything else. I don't know what fairies are, another race of God's creatures just doing their own thing. This took place in a major city in Ohio. I lived in a not so great neighborhood at the time. I was taking a shortcut walking towards this abandoned railroad bed when I spotted what at first I thought was a hummingbird. This was unusual because it wasn't a typical place where I would expect to see a hummingbird. But after a couple of moments of watching this thing, I realized that while it did have wings that were beating so fast they were blurred, it couldn't be a hummingbird. The figure attached to the blurred wings was humanoid. It was maybe as tall as an adult man's index finger is long, and the wings were attached to its back. I couldn't see much detail due to the blurring, and I can't recall if there was any color to the wings. But the being did appear nude, but I'm not 100% sure. I didn't get a good look at it. I approached slowly. I heard no noise from the being at all. As I got closer, the fairy drifted towards this large wild bush, possibly lilac, growing near the tracks. When I got even closer, the fairy eased around the edge of the bush out of my line of sight. I ran forward hoping to see it again, but it was gone. I looked around and in the bush, but never saw it again. I found out later that the entire area was very active, paranormally speaking. The experience just fits with so much lore regarding fairies that I don't know what else it could have been. I find them fascinating. I would dearly love to interact with them on a daily basis if I could. There's something about them. When you've seen one, the experience sticks with you and makes you ache for more. Many years ago, circa 1982, I lived in an old Brisbane mansion that had been converted into flats in the 1930s. Next door, at the end of a cul-de-sac, was an overgrown lot on which stood a once magnificent house built by a wealthy timber merchant in the 1920s. It had become abandoned and somewhat derelict. Often my friends and I would explore the beautiful old place, wistfully imagining the grandeur of the old house in its heyday. One night, after a visit there, I was returning alone to the border of the two properties. On the border stood some magnificent and very old trees. I think they were some sort of imported conifer because the original owner of the property, having been in the timber trade, had planted some rather unique exotics. On this night, I made my way back home and... I was suddenly arrested by the apparition of a glowing bluish light, 10 to 15 centimeters in diameter. It appeared from somewhere near the base of one of the old trees, rapidly rose upwards in an arc, hovered in the air briefly, 
and then plunged at great speed into the tree's branches several meters above the ground, where it vanished. The occurrence was stark, simple, and absolutely real. At the time, I thought it might have been a mini UFO. But in retrospect, I began to think that fairy was the more accurate description. I can't be certain, of course, that it was a fairy per se, only that it was a very distinct but weird light. I have since read descriptions of fairies that are similar to what I experienced, so I think fairy is a pretty good guess. I don't know if there is any connection between the age of the surrounding houses and trees and the presence of fairies, but I think there must be. In old lore, fairies and ghosts go hand in hand, so I think it makes sense that fairies would be present in places with a lot of history and memories. Places where people lived a long time ago. Places where they died. I used to work in this small, hole-in-the-wall occult shop. It was basically just a room with a bunch of shelves stuffed with books and candles and crystals, that kind of thing. It wasn't well organized and had a kind of rummage sale or even garage sale feel to it. It was just me and two other employees working there in shifts. We always worked alone. The owner was a strange man, older in his 60s or 70s, I think. He did not seem like the type of person to own an occult shop. He was a British expat, this happened in Canada. Very straight-laced, an old-fashioned English gentleman type. If you'd met him randomly and judged him on first impressions alone, you would probably think he was a stodgy university professor or something like that. So it was just weird to me that he was into the occult. He only very rarely came by the store. He was very hands-off, allowing me and the other employees to pretty much run the place. I liked the job. I was really into Wicca at the time, and I liked being surrounded by all the books and crystals. We had some interesting customers, too, and sometimes I would get into long conversations with them about witchcraft and paganism or whatever. It was fun. But there was some weirdness in that store as well. On a semi-regular basis, books would seemingly jump off the shelves by themselves. I used to joke with customers whenever this happened that the store ghost was at it again. I also occasionally saw strange shadows or shapes out of the corner of my eye. But the atmosphere overall was pleasant, welcoming. I never felt an eerie or threatening presence there. But there was something else that happened there every once in a while that kind of creeped me out. Sometimes I would lose customers in the store. When I say lose, I mean I would see them come into the store, but I wouldn't see them leave. This happened on multiple occasions. I remember the first time it happened. I was chatting with one of our regulars at the front of the store. I was standing behind the cash register, which was right across from the front door. A second customer walked in, and I greeted her. She didn't want my help, she just wanted to browse, so I left her alone and went back to my conversation. I do admit I was quite distracted by the conversation, and by the end of the day when I started to close up, I realized I had never actually seen that second customer leave the store. Now, even though the store was small, it had high shelving units, so I couldn't see everything from the front. I looked around the store, but I couldn't find this customer anywhere. There was a door at the back, but it was locked and you needed a key to open it. I had the key at the front cache. I thought it was strange that I hadn't noticed this woman leave, but I assumed that I must have been distracted and just not noticed her even though I thought this was unlikely. 
I forgot about the incident after that until it happened again, maybe a month or so later. Again, I was chatting with a customer when a second customer walked in and again, I did not see this customer leave. It's hard to describe just how unlikely it is that I wouldn't see someone leave that store. The cash register was directly across from the front door. Customers had to pass by me in order to leave. I won't say it was impossible, but very, very unlikely. And had it happened only once or even twice, I could have dismissed it as having something to do with me, like I had been distracted or spaced out, or I had seen the person leave but had just forgotten. But this happened a good six or seven times during the year that I worked there. I asked one of the other employees about it, and she said something similar had happened to her several times. This is extremely unlikely. There was a basement, and the stairs that led to the basement were at the back of the store. But the stairs were blocked with a rope and a sign that said employees only. But I don't see why anyone would go down there. It was only a small storage space. And if someone had gone down there and then I closed the store, I would have locked them in. I'm sure I would have figured this out when I got a call from the police. But no calls from the police, no missing persons reports in the area that I knew of. I can't explain it. And it remains a mystery. In my more imaginative moments, I wonder if there was some sort of door to another world at the back of that store like a Harry Potter type thing where people from another reality were using the store as like a gateway to access something or somewhere else. We had a number of books on the Fae in that store and when I think back on my time there, my first instinct back then, even before I started looking for a rational explanation, was that this had something to do with fairies. I only wish I knew what... Thanks for watching, and thanks to everyone who submitted their stories for this one. Tell me what you think of these in the comments. Which was your favorite, and have you had any similar experiences, or can you explain any of the mysteries in these stories? I have a website up and running at scaryfairygodmother.com, link in the description. It has a spot where you can submit your fairy stories, or submit comments, questions, or suggestions. You can also sign up for the mailing list there. It's free to sign up. I'll be sending out occasional sneak peeks. Still haven't sent anything yet, but will eventually, I promise. Um, so I'll be sending that kind of thing to mailing list subscribers. It'll be a surprise when it happens. Um, so if you are interested, please sign up. I'll definitely be adding more to the website in the future, so check back. And if you join the mailing list, I'll let you know that way. As always, special thanks to all of my supporters on Patreon who are helping to keep this content going and helping me to do things like build websites. I just really appreciate you guys so much and the support you are giving this work. If you like this content and would like to support it, please check out my Patreon page. The link is in the description. You can also join the channel by clicking the join button below this video. The stories in this video came courtesy of subscribers and the fairy census. So thanks for everyone to everyone who submitted and special thanks to the fairy census at the fairy investigation society. These stories were edited for dramatic and narration reasons. If you would like to read the original census stories, the link to the census is in the description. Please leave a comment below, like, share, and subscribe if you're new. It really helps the channel when you do and hit the bell to receive notifications of new videos. And until next time, this has been a visit from your scary fairy godmother.